He's best known for his role as M'Baku in the wildly successful Black Panther franchise, but behind the fierce and humorous tribal leader Winston Duke loves to portray is a man who's deeply committed to his philanthropic work and is candidly speaking about the loss of his mother. I sat down with Duke earlier this week ahead of Wakanda Forever's Disney Plus release. So I'm curious how you guys were able to balance so well Chadwick's passing it seems that in uh, Wakanda Forever, you have the fans, you have the, the, the cast and crew who are really able to, to grieve mm -hmm. his loss, but at the same time still celebrate the future of their franchise. How do you think you were able to, to balance that so well? You know, one thing was they invited us to grieve in our process of work. So they didn't say, leave your, your grief at home. They didn't say, hey, you know, we really need you to just show up and be here. It was bring it to work. And we had a lot of just shorthand in understanding who had the harder time on what day. So if I was having a hard time on any particular day, then I or Letitia would come over and just say, I get it. You know, let's just take a breather. And then you would do the same on another day. And that kind of span that that spanned across the board with everyone on set because it wasn't you know it's it's a village so we're grieving the producers the director ryan would wear uh chadwick's face on his chain the entire time uh, we did things to remember that we're all grieving like leaving that number one slot on the call sheet open for him, things like that, you know. So it was just remembering and making that a big part of the process. And then on the flip side, we found a lot of chances to have fun and make the movie ours and just keep the levity, which I found myself through M'Baku. You know, M'Baku is that character that is a bit like the audience. If the audience could be in the movie, that's what they would say. That's how I always look at him. He's the stress test. He's going to stress test the situation to make sure it deserves to be in the position that it's in. And he's going to be irreverent in his honor. And, and let's talk about that a little bit, the character of Umbaku, because there is that, that witty banter <laughs> that, that we yeah. discussed earlier yeah, yeah, with, yeah. you know, the bald-headed yeah, demon, yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah. example. Does that just come from you naturally? Is that impromptu? There's a lot of improvisation. I love improving. I love like finding once I know the character and this character I know really well. This fishman would be bound before us as we if speak. If your muscle brains were present, they would still be there choking on their fuzzy adornments. You bald headed demon. We had a really extensive process on the first movie. So we started prepping maybe three months before we shot the first movie. So there was a lot of work to build that character, finding uh, M'Baku in the Igbo tradition, Igbo Nigerian tradition, and really finding that man. So once you're on set, you could just forget all the work and just channel whatever comes through all the way. So at this point, he feels natural. I can get back in him, get back in that, that zone and find the humor, you know? And the script is usually written so well that you can find ways to add something, a different layer, and that's the improv. And Ryan really leaves that, that space open for you. What is the evolution, do you think, of M'Baku, if there is to be mm -hmm. a, another Black Panther? And will there be another <laughs> Black Panther? <laughs> you know, I think, so that's a really great question, right? But let's just look at it, and I, I'm not confirming this because I have inside information. I'm just using logic. The first movie made over a billion dollars. The, the second movie made over 800, uh, maybe 900 million dollars. I really think um, one of the strengths of this movie is showing that movies with black characters, with characters, with stories led by women are valuable. They're valuable, and they're valuable in all markets. They're valuable in all markets internationally. So if I were to guess, yes, they'll be a number three. And you just mentioned, I mean, there actually is a superlative here because I think it was the highest grossing female-led superhero movie in the United States ever. Yes. And, and so what was it like working with all these 
powerful superhero women? <laughs> uh, you know, they make the job easier. Why? Because they show up prepared. If it's one thing you can trust is that the Nai Guarira, Lupita Nyong'o, Angela Bassett, Letitia, they're all going to show up ready to go. And if you're not ready, you're going to be outed. You know what I mean? So I've always been, and even from Black Panther 1, I had, you know, even some really great men, you know, on the movie as well. And I said, I can't be the one that's caught out. So you show up ready to go. And they drive you in that way. They drive you through the best kind of leadership, which is example. You know, I, I, I said in some other interviews that Angela Bassett got a standing ovation mm -hmm. in her big monologue scene in the movie. We know what you whisper. They have lost their protector. Now is our time to strike. You saw an underwater empire. It was one of those moments where you said, because these big movies, these big Marvel movies, sometimes you can fall into a trap of acting by, by the numbers, like mm. painting by number, yeah. right? Which is, it's green screen, stand over there, look left, say the lines, you know. And you can fall into the trap of losing the spontaneity. And when you, I saw her and when the entire set saw her that day, she was in it. She was finding the spontaneity. She was finding the drama. She was finding the humanity. Mm -hmm. And then it reminded you, man, this is why I tell stories. Mm -hmm. Because that's really what it's about. It's about storytelling. It's about finding a way to make the broad really narrow and consumable, right? To make grief to feel like your lineage is potentially wiped out. She said, my entire family's gone. My husband, my son, now my daughter is gone. How do you make such uh, an ocean of grief understandable in five lines? That's the alchemy. That's the alchemy that's present. And when you see a really great um, actor and practitioner make it look simple, and moving, it's magic. And that's what you would see. You, you just mentioned humanity. Mm -hmm. And one thing that, that people may not know about you is that you're a global activist, right? Mm -hmm. So beyond just the storytelling, you're actually living that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so tell us about the, the partnership that you have, because now you're an ambassador, mm -hmm. right, with PIH. <laughs> so tell us about, about that role, mm -hmm. if you will, what, what inspired you and, and what you hope to do with it. Well, I'm the ambassador for Partners in Health, which is kind of the OG uh, social medicine um, organization around the world. Um, so they're in 11 countries. They started in Haiti um, and helped to curve the AIDS epidemic in Haiti in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and it's really about bringing a holistic look to medicine. For far too long, medicine has been reductive, where we think of medicine as just the hospital and the pharmaceuticals, and hopefully people get better just from those things, right? Just the service. But the real service is looking at it holistically. Medicine is not just the pharmaceutical. It's thinking about the community. It's about their family. It's about their home life. It's what else are their needs, right? So it's really broadening the idea of what medicine can be and saying that medicine is a human right. Mm -hmm. It's not something just for the wealth, the wealthy of the world. You know, I was in Rwanda for a month and I met a woman who, you know, was found with HIV and late stage HIV where it was pretty much terminal. And they brought her back, gave her all the antivirals and things like that. And at some point, she plateaued. And they said, we're giving, you know, you've got all the medicines, you have access to food, we're giving you food. What's, what's going on? Like, how come you're not getting better? You're not gaining any weight? And she said, you know, I have kids. My kids are across the border, and I feel bad that I'm having food and my kids can't eat. So they found a way to get her kids mm -hmm. to her. 
and bring them across the border and complete her family, she started gaining weight. Mm. And they go back to her, they say, what else do you need? She says, I'd love a stable job and for my kids to be able to go to school. It cost maybe $1,700 for them to buy her a plantation. So they bought her a plantation, a banana plantation. Now she has a business. Her kids got into one of the best schools in the country. And her viral load is so low that it's almost undetectable mm. when tested. So they created a situation for her, Partners in Health. And I hope to really champion that message that health care is a human right. We all deserve it. And even in a country like our own that seems completely developed, we still have major holes and major things that need to change. You know, I'm, I lost my mom two months ago, and within a week I was on tour promoting a movie. And no one had the full expectation of me to be there, but I did have that expectation of myself. I'm really proud that I was able to do that. I felt like I honored my mom being there and championing my own narrative. You know, people in this country get two to three days for bereavement. Mm. You know, there's a corporate model in how we look at grief. Even in my industry, how we portray death, that's what's really radical about Black Panther. Black Panther shows the effects of loss on community, on family. The whole movie is about loss and pain. And, you know, often you see the good guy or the bad guy kill someone and they just move on. There's never the fallout. What is it that inspires you? Because a lot of people, they don't necessarily use their platform for good beyond them, themselves. You know, I'm a storyteller and I see story everywhere. I'm inspired by great stories. I'm inspired by people. I'm inspired by people's stories. I'm inspired by amplifying the voices of the unseen. Um, even as a big black man for a very long time, even I felt reduced and treated reductively, where it's either I'm only sexualized or seen for like my body, whether it can perform for sport or commodified, I can see clearly where other people fall into very reductive spectrums in their own life. And part of my goal is to help tell those stories, to amplify those stories, to help people feel like they can find their own voice, to state their own grief, their own pain. Um, so I'm really attracted to things like that. I'm really attracted to bringing light, you know, uh, the light to, to show all those things I just talked about. What's next for you? <sighs> What's next for me? Um, I'll be very candid with you. Um, I'm working on a lot of things. I'm working on a new movie uh, called Fall Guy. Um, it's a David Leach movie with uh, Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt. It's very fun, action, comedy, um, all of the things. Uh, good popcorn film. Part of me feels like I've lost a compass mm. and I'm not sure what's next. I'm bravely staring through that storm and trying to figure out what's next. My mother was my compass. My family is my compass. My family is one of the reasons I do everything and had a sense of why I'm doing it and where I was going. So I'm recreating my compass at the moment. I'm recreating my compass and figuring out where this storm is going to leave me on what shore. Mm. So it, it's a hard question, but that's, I would say that's what's next for me, is I'm recreating my compass and trying to weather this storm. Our thanks to Winston for sitting down with us. Black Panther Wakanda Forever will begin streaming on Disney Plus February 1st and will be available on DVD and Blu-ray shortly thereafter.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.